Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much. All right. All right. Um, we're going to um, start by reviewing the um, basic tags that we spoke about last time, the basic structural tags. Um, we, we talked about the first week or so of class of a set of tags that are on every web page, the HTML, the head, the body, uh, the title. Um, we then talked last week about um, tags that sort of form the basic structure of the page. Um, and that includes the, um, the, the um, header, which is distinct from the head. It also includes the footer. It includes uh, a section tag. It includes um, article tag. It includes a nav tag. It includes uh, an aside tag. And so we'll, we'll, we, we then added a few other tags in the mix that we can use if we need them. And those include the A tag, the um, UL and LI tags, and the paragraph tag. What we're going to do today is we're going to make a page um, about fall, the upcoming fall season. Why not? All right, it's as good as any. And we're going to use that exercise to review um, the basic tags. And then we'll go in and we will extend that to um, include images. All right, and then depending on the time, we'll, in, we'll extend that to include um, some CSS formatting. So let's go and let's start out. I didn't want to click on that. I'm opening up Notepad. And I'll put the doc type, which again is not really a tag. It's called a declaration. And it just tells people, not doesn't tell people, it tells the browser. Um, what to expect, what, what format the HTML is, um, what format this document is. And th this, tells the document, uh, this tells the browser that this is HTML5. So even though you don't see a 5 anywhere there, that means that this is HTML5. So basic HTML tag. One thing I, I do typically is as I type the start tag, I'll type in the end tag. I'll go down a few lines and I'll put that in. That's just a good way to like not forget to include the end tag. I noticed when I graded the first assignment, there was a lot of people, for example, that did not have like an end body or end HTML tag. And my guess is they started typing it, they put the start tag in for those, and they forgot to get around to, to closing them. So if you close them right away, then you're not going to uh, have that situation. Now, you might say, well, let's say I did that and I didn't have a problem with that. Well, again, remember, the best bet for browser compatibility and for future browser compatibility and for compatibility with other devices and compatibility with other software that might be reading your page. That is like Google crawling the web uh, to index it so, so that searches can be done. Your best bet in having your page set with that is by following the rules exactly. So while if you break one of these rules, sort of all bets are off. It could work in the sense that it could look correct in a certain browser. It may not work in another browser. And it may cause problems in other contexts. So your best bet is, is to follow the rules. So I'm going to go in I'm going to put the Start head. Oh, that's okay. So 
I, I see already how today is going to be. <laughs> no, 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 not for the sneezing, for my typing. I like, it took me like six tries to get the start head tag correctly. And I, there, there is something in the air um, that bugs me a little bit too recently. I don't know if you're having the same sort of allergies or what. All right. These are the tags that are on every page. You could even make a template if you wanted, whereas you just like had this shell of a web page, and every time you made a new page, copy from that. Later on in the semester, we'll talk a little more about making templates. Um, whereas if you want to make a website, one of your goals is to have your site look consistent. All right? So therefore, um, you, you know, instead of making each page from scratch, you'll make sort of a template, and you'll copy that, and you'll change the part that needs to be changed for the different pages. All right. At any rate, we'll call this page a tribute to fall. Right off the bat, I'm not going to have a navigation because I don't, I'm just going to make this a single page. Um, later on, if we had a link somewhere, we might have a navigation section. I'll put an article here and put a header. And again, I know that's a little confusing, the header and the head. The header belongs with the body. And it is sort of like the banner of the head. Um, the banner of the web page, rather. Now, I've had people ask things such as, you know, sometimes in, my, in the instructions for an assignment, I'll say, use the tags that you find in chapter one, or use the tags that are found in chapter two. And the question is, is like, do you have to use all of them? And the answer is, of course not. All right? Use the tags that are appropriate for whatever you're working on. So, for example, in this case, I only have an H1. Why? Because I only have one heading, all right? And therefore, I'm not going to, just so that I can use an H2, an H3, an H4, 5, and 6, make something up, right? I'm going to use an H1 um, and only use an H1 because that's all I need to do. I'm only having one heading on my section. If I would have sketched this out, I would have sketched this out and only shown one heading. So um, there's only going to be one heading. Yes? Ah, I forgot the slash. Very good. Well, not very good. Very good that you caught it. Not very good that I did it. All right. I'm going to put Notice again within each section or article the headings start again with H1. All right. I don't think I explicitly said that in a, in a previous class, but for example, H1 is the top header in the header section. This one is. This is the top header in the article section. And this article will be why top 10, if I can think of 10, reasons why I like fall. Now what tag do you think I should use to show the list of reasons why I like fall? A list. A list. And I could do an ordered list or an unordered list, depending on really if there is an order. Right? I mean, these aren't, this isn't like an official ranking where I'm going to say, well, I like this a little bit more than that. So this is going to be 
I'll just rephrase it to say 10 reasons why I like fall. And so since this is a list of things, and since the order really doesn't matter, I'm going to make it an unordered list. An unordered list, remember, you have a start UL tag and an end UL tag. And then within that, you have your LI tags for your list items. So for a list, there's only one UL or OL tag. But you will have multiple LI tags, one for each list item. No. A, 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 list, a list, whether it be an ordered or non-ordered list, needs LI tags in there to indicate the, the, the distinct items. Now within that LI tag you can put stuff, like for example, um, maybe I would have, you know, and maybe we'll expand this uh, in future classes to include a picture of each of these things. In which case uh, that LI tag could include an image and some text, but it has to be within an LI tag. All right. So, moderate temperatures. Um, beautiful foliage. I realized I, I maybe can't think of 10 reasons I like fall. Yeah, maybe, yeah, two reasons, yeah. Um, football. It looks like I missed the, I, I watched the wrong half of the Browns game yesterday. I watched the first half and then had to go do something. And... <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was I was shocked when I saw that. Um, I uh, yeah, I, I I thought you know is they're so far behind. It's no fun listening on the radio. I won't even listen to it. You know, I'll just listen to music or whatever. And yeah, very very nice. Okay. All right, here's four reasons. I know I, I, one thing I refuse to put on this list is pumpkin lattes, because <laughs> I don't like, I mean, pumpkin, the only, uh, pumpkin pie is good. And I've had Thanksgiving, yeah, there we go. Good point, good point. Yes. Oh, no, OK. I see your point. I, I'm not going to argue. I will include it as two separate entries. <laughs> but I'm, I'm standing my ground on pumpkin lattes for two reasons. Um, the first reason is I really, I think pie and I've had a pumpkin soup that was actually really good. But those are the only two things that, only two ways to eat pumpkins. You know, it's like in coffee? Come on. And the, what, pardon me? Yeah, I guess that's okay. Although I do prefer sunflower seeds, to, to All right. So let's go and let's take a look at what we have so far. All right. Now I'm going to go save this. I'm going to save it on the desktop. I am going to remember to change that to all files. And remember to change this, or uh, remember to put the uh, .html file extension. So I'll say fall.html. Now I can view it in the browser. And there's our code in the browser. Tribute to fall, beautiful season, reasons why I like fall. Those are the two H1s. The title, remember, is up here. 
attribute to fall. And my list, because I defined it as an unordered list in no particular order, it appears as a list of bulleted points. Questions about this? Uh, uh, yeah, in that sense, yeah. The question was, is do I have to repeat the title? And you don't actually have to repeat it completely. You can reword it. Right. And, and, and remember, that, again, this, that this serves two purposes. One is, that the, uh, one is that the title will be viewed up here on the title bar. And it will also be viewed if you minimize it. And depending on the version of, yeah, there you see attribute to fall. Therefore, you might want to make that title a little shorter, you know, like less words. Whereas this is what the user is actually going to see, and therefore you have more space and can probably put more in. So yeah, one is to let the one is to be able for the to let the user be able to identify the window. The other is content of the page, and and you should be as as long as as you want to for that. Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Um, Google search algorithm is. Um, I mean, it, it, it's how they made their millions, right, or billions, probably. Um, therefore, it's unclear exactly all the ingredients to go in. But it would search on the title. It would search on the content of the page as well. It gives weight to different factors, including how many pages link to you. That's a, that's a, a high, uh, high factor on the list. And there's a whole bunch of other factors, too, that determine what happens when you type in a search term, what you get. So to answer your question, I don't think the title or the header would have a, an impact as far as the search results go. Both of them would be cons one. Um, let me rephrase that. One wouldn't have a greater impact than the other. I believe both of them would be weighted equally, but I can't say that for absolute sure. All right. Questions. Let's add a second article to this page. Right? Because we have our first article, which is just a list. Let's add a poem. If I was more wide awake, I'd try to write a haiku about fall. But no way I'm trying that today. I am going to pretend I didn't hear that. I am still going to pretend I didn't hear that because we don't do joke about academic dishonesty. Ah, then we're not stealing it, yes. All right, so let's go in and let's, let's search for I knew Robert Frost would be on there. I don't know anything about poetry, but I had a pretty good idea. Yeah, exactly. After apple picking. Now watch this, because this is going to be interesting, and this is something that was unintended. So I post the poem in here. And I'm going to go make this an H1, because it's sort of a top level. I'll make this an H2, because it's sort of secondary. Shh. 
No spoilers. All right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to save it. And as we view it, everyone but the person that yelled it out, what's going to happen? We're going to lose all our spacing. And it just looks like a straight paragraph of stuff. All right. Now, what do you do? That's a good question. Poems are sort of an exception. I'm going to use a tag that I normally tell you never to use. This, this might be very well be the one exception to use it. I'm going to use a break tag. And a break tag is simply a BR It has a slash after like that because this is a start and end tag rolled into one. And we'll talk more about that later. All right. But I'm going to put a break tag at the, uh, at the end of every line. And then we'll get our formatting back. Because almost anything else you can do via CSS. And it, and it would be preferred because it would be more flexible. This is forcing the break, no matter what. Whereas, if I wanted to put extra space and I wanted to change the, the spacing, I could do that via CSS and I could uh, more easily change it. All right, so I will put the 5 million break tags at the end of each line. Actually, the one at the end of each five million lines. All right, there we go. And now we have this. And the poem looks like we wanted it to. All right. And the BR, and again, it's BR slash. The BR slash is simply a shorthand uh, that means the same thing as this. Start tag, end tag rolled into one. Now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to say where I got this from. And we'll learn other tags for this. But for now, we are going to use simply a paragraph that contains a link. So now, this is a link to another page. It's not a page that I've created. So I need the full path to the file, which is http colon slash slash and the rest of the URL. Now if I go and save this, poem from the Poetry Foundation, I click on it, I go to the original source eventually. All right. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to add some images to this. I'll pick an image or two of, of fall. Now, we talked a little bit about copyright and images. There is a different kind of copyright um, other than the standard copyright which I've talked about, whereas, you know, students, there's one set of rules. Businesses and individuals, there's a different set of rules. There's a different way that a creative person can license their content, all right, to make it more easy for people to use and share. And that's called a Creative Commons licensing. I don't know, any of you familiar with Creative Commons licensing? 
Yeah, Creative Commons licensing essentially says, hey look, I'm just going to give blanket permission to use my work, but you have to follow a certain set of rules. All right? Usually you have to give credit. And the difference between this and the kind of copyright I described before is this applies to typically, it, it can apply rather to businesses, individuals, and, and whatever. It's not just something for students. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Flickr site, all right? Uh, Flickr is a, is a, is a famous uh, sharing site. And I'm going to do a search for pictures of autumn, but I'm going to limit my search to Creative Commons licensing, all right? So let's go. Now I'm going to click advanced search and I'm going to say only search within creative license content. Even within Creative, license, uh, content, uh, creative Commons uh, licensing, there's a couple variations. You can, uh, you can restrict it to not be used commercially. All right, so you, know, you would allow individuals to use your pictures, but not businesses. Lastly, you can allow your content be modified. So for example, if I found a pretty picture of Autumn and I was allowed to modify it, I could put Bigfoot in the middle of it or something like that because I'd be allowed to modify it. So I'm going to search for both of these. This is the least restrictive licensing of all. And I have these pictures. I kind of like this one, so I'm going to take it. And I'm going to go and download this. Let's share. Gotcha. And we'll take a small version of it. We'll download it. And I'm going to copy this address so I can still give credit. All right. Now I'm going to create another article. Now you could say, these really aren't articles. You have a list, you have a poem, and you have a picture. And you're right. What I would say, though, is it's not really necessary to split hairs like that. If you want to call it a section instead of an article, that's fine. Or I call it an article, really not that, that big of a deal. All right. I've gone and I have downloaded that, and that image is now on the desktop. All right. Notice that I'm not seeing file extensions. I had mentioned before that it's a good idea to show file extensions no matter what. This will especially become important when we start dealing with images. Because with images, there's a number of different formats that your image could be stored in. And they all relate to internally how the data is stored within the image file. All right? There are GIF files which end in extension GIF. There are PNG files, which end in what extension? PNG, all right? And then finally, there are JPEG files. And those are probably the trickiest, because they could end in a JPG extension. They could end in a JPEG extension. They could end in a JPE extension. I've seen all three of those. And there may even be more that I'm not thinking of right now. So, if I don't get the file and the extension correct, well, item type is a JPEG, but I'm betting the extension is JPG. All right, so let's go and let's view file extensions. And we can go to my computer and... 
organize, folder and search options, view, hide extensions. I'm going to turn that off. Note that this is different, for example, in Windows 8, and it's different in earlier versions of Windows. So now if we look at it, we can see it ends in a .jpg. That's again why it's deceptive. It's a JPEG file, but it ends in JPG. Uh, I'm going to go and rename this just uh, so I don't have to do a lot of typing. So I'm going to right mouse on it, say rename, and I'm going to call it fall.jpg. So now I'm going to go and put Now I'm going to put that image on the page. Now, the tag for an image is IMG. All right. But you might you might you might might think to yourself, that's not enough to say what image. Which image do I want there? I could have a bunch of images on my website. Which one do I want to specifically show right here? All right. So I have to specify the name of the file. Just like when I create a link, I have to specify the name of the web page that I want to link to, or if I want it to be an email link or whatever. So, the attribute for the name of the file is the SRC attribute. And then I put the name of the file, and then I put quotes around it. So, IMG SRC equals fall.jpg. It could not be equal to a link. It could be equal to the URL of an image somewhere on the web. There could be an, a, a small exception to that, but yeah, generally this needs to point to an image out there somewhere. Now I'm going to specify a second attribute. And every image that you create, with rare exceptions, um, needs two attributes. Do keep in mind, every time I say every time, or always, or something like that, you should hear in your head, well, there might be a couple exceptions, you know. Uh, so, so, you know, there, nothing's 100%. So if I say you will always have these two attributes, realize that, yeah, there might be an exception, right? Okay. The second attribute that you have is called an alt attribute. And what it does, it does a couple things. The main thing that the alt attribute does is it provides a text description, a short text description of the image. All right. It does that for people that are accessing the web through assistive technology. For example, blind people that access the web using a screen reader. All right. A screen reader actually reads the screen to them. And we'll, later on in the term we might, might take a listen to a screen reader. But in essence it reads the screen to them. Well, how's it going to read an image to someone? It, it can. It can't look at that image file and describe it. That's why, that's why you have to supply the description. So the all attribute allows you to define a text description of what the page is so that people that are blind at least get that. All right? So they know sort of what is there. All right? Again, it's not a great substitute. It's not a substitute for seeing it, but at least it gives the user the idea of what it is that they're missing. All right? And in some cases, um, that will help explain the content of the page better. So the two attributes that an image tag will always have is 
it will have the SRC attribute, which indicates the file name. It needs to be the full file name, including the extension. And the alt attribute, which is alternative text. Now, this is assuming that the image is in the same folder as the web page, which is the case here, right? Because the image is on the desktop and the web page is on the desktop. The desktop's really just one folder. So we're assuming for this way of naming the file, just putting in the file name, that everything's in the same folder. All right, I'm then going to put in a credit. Oh, good question. I did not follow my own advice. The image is also one of those tags that doesn't really have a start and end tag. So you could do this. But that's kind of silly. All right. So what you normally do is, just like we did with the BR tag, this. This indicates that this is a start and end tag rolled in the one. Any, one second. You can't do that with every HTML tag, right? Because with a link, there needs to be something between the start and end tag. But with an image, with a break, there's not, there, there can be cases, in fact, all the time it will be the case that there'll be nothing between the start and ending tag. And therefore, um, you do it that way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, it closes the image tag. Okay. The image tag is the tag. The all is an attribute of the image tag. Oh, okay. right, it's extra information about that image. Now, as far as your second question go, uh, goes, if I wanted the image to be a link, I would put the image between the start and end link tag, like this. Normally you have text, normally we've seen text between the start and end tag, but you could put an image between there. Then the image you could click on, the image would be a link. What was your first question? Uh, ah, okay. That's why I didn't remember it. It wasn't really a pe uh, question. It was just you're right. So I go to save it now. And if I go to view the page, there's the image. Right. Questions? Yes. Oh, I just put the end paragraph tag. Oh, the, yeah. All right. We'll definitely talk more about images. Um, we're, we're not done talking about images. Um, there's a couple of, of things that, that w I will talk about is, again, 
there's different ways that you can obtain images. One way is to take them yourself, in which case you're the copyright holder. The other is through Creative Commons, which means that someone has the willingness to share their copyrighted material with you. And the third is a conventional copyright, for which there's fair use for students to use the material with a little more flexibility than other folks can do. We can make background images. In other words, I could have, instead of a plain white background, we could have a background of a fall scene if we wanted to. And we'll talk about that. The other thing that we'll talk about is um, rudimentary image editing. In other words, let's say I wanted to make this image um, a little bit smaller. How could I do that? All right. well, so we'll talk about all those things. But I do want to introduce you to CSS. All right. So we'll kind of talk about images and CSS simultaneously for at least the next, for the rest of this class and for the next class. CSS is what allows us to change the way that the page looks and the way that the page is laid out. All right. So. Anything about the page that is a visual aspect of it. For example, the H1, the fact that it is a certain size and the font is black and that the font is Times New Roman. Those are all visual things. That's not anything about the content. In other words, I could change this to green and it would still say tribute to fall a beautiful season. So changing it to green won't change the content. Making it bigger or smaller won't change the content. Making it a different font won't change the content. Anything that's about the visual or the layout of the page is handled via CSS. All right? What I usually do to start the discussion of CSS is to do what's most obvious, assuming that no one is colorblind, and that is to change colors of the page. All right, so what we'll do is we'll look and see how we can change the colors of the page and the different things inside the page. All right. There's a resource in Angel, and in addition, you could also Google this, but I could look for an HTML color codes. I don't want that one. I want that one. Yeah, this is the one I want. If you look here, there is a set of colors and there's a name associated with them. Halloween orange. Let's see if that one works for us. The one thing I'm a little concerned about while I'm scrolling about this is, is different browsers support different things. So I'm a little concerned, but we'll give this a try. So, CSS is a different language. So we have to tell the browser we're not in, C we're not in HTML land anymore. We're in CSS land. We do that via we do that a couple ways, but one of the ways we can do that is with a style tag. The style tag says, hey, the code between the start and end style is not HTML. 
So don't apply the rules of HTML to it. All right? It's not. It's something else. It's CSS code. Between this, between the start and end style tag, there's a series of rules. And the rules tell the browser what it is on the, on the page that you want to change and what you want to change it to. So, I can refer to different HTML tags and say what is it about them that I want to change and what do I want to change it to. So, for example, I can say body. And I can say background. Halloween orange. Color. Let's just leave it at that for now. Body, background, Halloween orange. This is within the style tag because it's not HTML. I define what it is, what thing on the page I want to change, and what about it I want to change. I want to change the background color to Halloween orange. This is known as a style rule. All right? It's enclosed in these braces or curly brackets. It has the thing that we want to change, and then it has the value that we want to change it to. So let's save this. And I was afraid of that. Let's just change it to orange. All right, there we go. And so what did it do? It changed everything. Why did it change the background for everything to orange? Because I said the body tag. And what is in the body tag? Well, everything that you see on the page is nested in the body tag. So the, everything within the start and end body tag gets this color. Now, notice I never said that I want the text black. So why is the text black? That's the default, right. In other words, when we start doing these things to this page, the final outcome of what the page looks like is going to be a combination of two things. The one thing is our CSS rules. And the other thing is just the defaults of the browser. So we didn't specify the font. We didn't specify how big the H1 should be. We didn't specify the color of the text. All right. Yet certain values are applied to those, certain default values. What we did specify and what takes precedence over the browser defaults was the background of the body of the page. All right. And what we did, we made it orange. Now, what do you suppose will happen if I do this? If I change my style rule, instead of saying body background orange, if I say H1 background orange, just all the H1 headings will be orange. So here's an H1, here's an H1, here's an H1. All of those H1s will be orange. Now notice, notice that this is a small thing that we did by changing the colors, but it has a nice little effect here. All right? It has a nice effect, first of all, of making it look a little more like a fall page, right? instead of just plain, boring, white and black. It's, there's some orange in there, which is a nice little fall color. But it also serves to sort of divide the page into sections. All right, because this page does consist of one, two, three sections. And that heading, by putting a background color in that, 
we've helped the user identify that this isn't just one long string of stuff. This is three distinct sections. And so we're using these things in the style sheet, not just for decoration or to make it look nice. That, I mean, it's important. Of course we want our web page to look nice. But we're also using it to help give the user some visual cues as about how the page is laid out. All right? If, for example, I made one of the H1s, and we'll talk about how to do that later on, if I made one of the H1s instead of orange, I made it red. That would give a message to the user. There's something different about this section. There's something special about it. And that would draw attention to it. All right? We'll, we'll talk about that next time. There's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that either next time or in a future class. Yes? Yeah, the browser simply understands certain colors. It didn't understand Halloween orange, which I was kind of skeptical about from the start, but it did understand orange. Okay. So yeah, it, it knows a certain set list of colors. Yes? Yes. No, you just put in the code. We'll, we'll talk about the code next time, but yeah, you, you could just put in the pound sign, and there's six numbers after it. And that would give us that precise color. All right, we'll continue on with this. I really wanted to introduce the concept of it. And again, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about images and CSS next time. Any questions in Ridgeville? Or are you okay? No? All right. We'll see you next time then.